How do you build business credit in 2021? That is exactly what we are going to jump into in today's training. We are going to run an hour plus, but by the end of this training, you're going to know what business credit is. You're going to know how it works. You're going to know the benefits it provides you. You're going to know the step-by-step -step formula for 2021 to be able to get credit for your business EIN that's not linked to your personal social. I'm going to show you how to get business credit when you can't get any other kind of financing. I'm going to show you how to get business credit without a personal guarantee, without a personal liability separating your consumer and your commercial credit. And I'm going to teach you how to get business credit regardless of personal credit without a personal credit check. So whether you have good or bad personal credit, you're able to build business credit without putting any inquiries on your personal credit report and without your consumer credit quality controlling the actual results you get while you build business credit. So a lot of things that we're going to cover today, let's jump in. Today, we're going to talk about exactly how you can build business credit for your EIN that's not linked to your personal social security number in 2021. All new vendors, update on process, everything you need to know. We're going to be diving into talking about how to beat the banks and become fundable. They have a secret formula they don't want you to know about that they look at to determine if you should be approved for money, how much money you should get, uh, and the rates and terms you should pay. We're going to decode that formula to help you get the most money at the best terms for your business. We're going to talk about how anybody can build business credit. If you have a business in the United States, you're going to be able to succeed with this. doesn't matter if you're a for-profit, non-profit. I'm going to show you how to get that done. We're going to talk about brand new vendors that are our new person personal favorites here in 21 and 21 and some of the old ones that have now come back that used to be our favorites that are now reporting and uh, a lot of cool things that will help you build business credit without having to provide a personal guarantee or credit check to get the initial credit on your business credit reports. And we're going to talk about how you get high limit revolving credit cards as well in your business name that's not linked to you personally, how to do all this with no credit check, how to do all this with no personal guarantee. And we're also going to talk about how to get approved for up to $150,000 in credit lines, even as a startup business that will help jumpstart your business credit building process. A lot of questions are going to come in along the way. I'm going to have literally thousands of people here in the webinar and in the live stream. So if I don't get to your questions, I'm not ignoring you. I'm going to get through this and then I'm going to hang. I cleared a whole hour after this just to make sure that I have time to answer all your questions. Somebody's asking right now how to become a partner. We're going to cover that today as well as many other things. So look, you're in the right place if you're looking to get money to grow your business. If you've tried to get money before, a loan, a credit line, building business credit, you failed. I'm going to decode how you can succeed there. If you want the easiest and fastest way, if you want to take years of business credit building and condense it to months, then I'm going to give you the formula for that as well. If you want your business to fund itself where you don't need to personally be the signer for all the money that you're getting in the business, we're going to decode how to make that happen. If you want to get away from those personal guarantees, and if you want to get the most money for your business at the best terms, I mean the lowest rate and the longest terms that give you the lowest payments, all of that, we're going to decode the formula today. You're going to get it all. I won't dive in and tell you a little bit, a lot about myself. I can just tell you that uh, along the way, we've helped about 42,000 business owners with this process. It's very important. Look, there's a lot of gurus on YouTube and other social media channels that have succeeded doing something for themselves and they're teaching you what they do. Thank you to all those people that learn something and teach the rest of us entrepreneurs how to do it. Uh, I am not that guy. I'm the guy that's here going to tell you how we've helped 42,000 people through this process and all of the knowledge that we've gained from helping those 42,000. I'm now here to pass on to you to teach you the end result of the fastest way to achieve this. Uh, we are Best Entrepreneurial Company in 2018 by Entrepreneur Magazine, Inc. 5000 in 2019 and 20, A plus rated with a BBB, and we are not accredited. That means we didn't buy our A+. Plus. We earned it because we don't have complaints. We have hundreds of reviews online, hundreds of actual results and case studies on our website, and I'll show you many today as well. And I'm features oftentimes on radio, TV shows, podcasts, Entrepreneur Inc., Forbes, those type of publications. I only tell you this uh, so you know that I'm credible and that we are credible uh, to have this conversation with you today about how you can succeed with building business credit. So if you're staying to the end of this training, there's several things you're going to get. You're going to get a playback of this event, which is priceless. You're going to get 30 days of free business credit monitoring with Dun & Brad 3, Equifax, and Experian. They charge $249 for that. I'm going to get you your reports at no cost. 
And I'm going to get you set up with a no cost consultation with our team. If you ever look at our reviews online, you'll see most of our reviews are about this phenomenal experience people get on the consultation with us. I'm going to get you all of that. If you're staying to the end for free, I'm going to show you how to tap into all of that. So Look, let's talk about the problem. Getting money for a business is hard. Per the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, more than half of businesses will fail in five years or less. 82% of them are basically failing because of issues with cash flow. And, and 90% of business owners agree that the ability to get loans um, is difficult for them. As a matter of fact, a large percentage of business owner, this is what keeps us up at night is thinking about the financial problems of the business. How are we going to get the money to actually grow the company? So that's the problem that we are here today to solve. So how do you succeed with getting money? Well, we figured it out with three very specific things you must do if you want the most money, the best terms for your business. First, you have to be able to actually set up your fundability the right way. There's this criteria that lenders and credit issuers look at. They determine if you should be approved, how much you should get, the rates and terms you pay. Those fundability requirements changed in 2020, obviously with COVID, and now it's a whole new world in 2021. We're going to decode that today. You also need to get business credit for your EIN that's not linked to your social. Think of it like this. Imagine trying to go to get a car loan, trying to get a credit card, trying to get a mortgage and having bad credit or no credit established. It's very difficult to do as a consumer. Same thing in the business world. Building and getting money for your business is very difficult to do if your business doesn't have a credit report that reflects it's responsible enough to pay its bills. This is why you have to establish business credit. I'm going to decode that today. And the third part is you have to be able to access capital in one place. Look, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of different lending opportunities out there. But if you go to most of these lenders' websites, they don't even tell you what their approval criteria is. So you don't know that one's based on consumer credit quality, one's based on your cash flow, one's based on your collateral. So you have to be able to have access to all capital in one place. And by the end of this training, I'm going to teach you how to access that as well today. If you do these three things, that's what will help you get the most money at the best terms in your business. And I'm going to teach you today how to do all of that. And again, a lot of you have questions and comments coming in. I'm not neglecting you. I promise you I'll get to you. I'm going to hang out in the end. You have me for a full hour to make sure that all your questions and comments are answered. So let's talk about fundability. So think of it like this. If you've applied for a credit card before, you've either received an automated approval or you received that dreaded message that you'll hear by mail in seven to 10 days. I laugh when I say that because that has never worked out well for me. I always get the mail and it says they turned me down and what bureau they pulled. So we understand that instantaneous is, is what's an instant approval or denial is what ultimately the lender's coming up with. We know somebody's not looking at it to make that decision. We understand computers are doing it. This is what we call fundability. What these computers are looking for in your application will surprise you. It surprises many people. And the reasons you get denied for credit financing will also surprise you because they're not things like you think, like your revenue or your credit. It often has to do with one of these fundability issues. So if you know what fundability is, you know what to fix and how to set up your business the right way, this will account for more than half of the not denials you may see. So by fixing basic things about your business, you can take a lot of previous denials and turn around and get them into approvals just by improving fundability. Now, there's over 125 factors that we found when we dove in to figure out what makes a business fundable. You can see here, this is kind of our, our wheel that we created for our own internal team to understand fundability. This was never even created to put out in the world, but I'm showing you this because this is how we look at fundability. And if we zoom in a little so you can see a little better, you can see that there's all all these factors that lenders and credit issuers tap into to be able to determine if you're fundable or not. So we can see this little section right here, for example, Lexus, Nexus, and check systems are just two of those 125. We're going to talk about both the Lexus, Nexus, and check systems today. I'm even going to show you how to get your reports and fix that stuff um, without having to pay for that either. So again, there's all these factors that tie into fundability. And if you set up your business where it's fundable, this is the stuff that lenders and credit issuers are looking at. This is what makes you credible. This is what makes you lending, uh, lendable with actual lenders and credit issuers because this is where they see that your business is worthy of being issued a credit line, a credit card, or a loan. So you got to make sure that you fix a lot of things when we talk about fundability. Now, some of the changes this year is, first of all, you have to make sure your entity set up that has not changed into 2021. Lenders and credit issuers look at a corporation 
a partnership or an LLC preferably. They look at that better than a sole proprietor. You don't ever want to be a sole proprietor. You just don't. It makes it very difficult to get money. And look, I'm not an accountant. I'm not an attorney. This is not legal or accounting advice. But the statistics are that a sole proprietor gets audited one in seven times by the IRS. A corporation's one in 50. So not only do you dramatically reduce your chances of getting audited by being a corporation, but you also look a way better for lenders and credit issuers. So be a corporation if you can. If you don't want to do that, consider an LLC or consider a partnership, but avoid sole proprietorship at all costs. Okay, the type of phone number that you use. We are looking at business phone numbers. And what I mean by this is that you don't want to come in and you don't want to use a home phone as your business phone on an application for credit or financing. You don't want to use a mobile phone. You want to use a business phone number, an actual plugged into the wall business phone line they set up, or you can use a voice over IP or what's called a VoIP phone, but you still want to avoid Google Voice into 2021. I don't know what the deal is, but for some reason, we see a lot of vendors, a lot of credit issuers not liking Google Voice numbers. So that's one thing that can get you denied for credit financing. So you can use things like Ring Central. You can use Freedom Voice. There's a lot of these VoIP numbers out there that you can get, but make sure you get a phone number. Make sure it's toll free. Lenders and credit issuers still look at toll free numbers as being more credible than non toll free numbers. So have a toll free number, even if you're a local business. You don't really need to have a business fax number. I've always said in the past that one of the fundability requirements is the business fax number. It does look better if you have one, but it's not something that we've seen people getting denied for in 2020. So if you don't have the fax number, it's okay. Just get the phone number, get it to be listed or get it to be toll free and get it listed with 411. Listing that number with 411 is very, very important. This is still one of the big factors in 2021 that we're seeing credit issuers look at, especially vendors, is if your phone number is listed with 411. You can go to a company called List Yourself. Dot net list yourself dot net. I think is it. I think it's dot net, and they can actually set that up for you at a cost. I'll talk to you about how you can get that for free as we get later into this training. The type of address that you can set up for your business. You still need a physical business address if you can get one. You still need a virtual address. I know COVID has moved a lot of businesses into the home, but the credit issuer and lenders have not changed their perception here, where a business with a real physical location looks more credible to them. Been a home operated business, not me. I'm here teaching you what lenders and credit issuers are looking for. So you really need to make sure that you have a business address, like a retail location. If you don't, consider a virtual address. Our favorite is still Alliance. You can go to Da Vinci. You can go to Regis. They'll all help you get addresses that make it look like you're in a big high rise building in Dallas, Texas, when really you're working from your home. You're just using that address uh, for uh, mail purposes where you get mail, they scan it in, they email it to you, and you still have the benefit of making it look like you're in a big physical location, even when you're not. Now, in 2021, we are seeing Dun & Bradstreet make a bigger move to putting Google Street views of your business on your business credit report. So remember, if your home address is your business address, and that's what you're using, and that's what you're telling the bureaus it is, then you can expect to see a Google Street view of your house on your commercial credit report in the months and years to come. We see that in 2020, DMV was experimenting with that, and we're starting to see that happen more and more in as we move into 2021. Uh, type of licensing you have, if you have a license, there's a lot of credit issuers that look more favorably on your business. Don't know why, but if you can have a license, it makes you look more legit to lenders and credit issuers. In Florida, you can get an occupational license in a county, even though you're not required to. So getting occupational licenses, getting a license in your industry, in your state, in your county, uh, definitely helps and goes a long way. Today, I'm going to teach you about a vendor that will give you like a $2,500 credit line just because you have a business license. Congruency of records still remains in 2021 the number one fundability factor you need to focus on. The reason most of us get denied is because we fill out an application with information. The lender and the credit issuer automatically defaults to thinking that it is a fraudulent application because most applications they get are fraud. And it's even worse through 2020. So all these fraudulent applications come in and you submit yours and they're trying to see if yours was fraud or not. So what they do secretly behind the scene is they take all this data from your, your, your application and they're checking it against these secret credit reports I'm going to teach you about today, these secret databases, they keep it, and they're just seeing if the information matches or not. If it doesn't match, 
then what happens is they automatically assign the application as fraud and they kick it to somebody for manual review. And you know, if you're that person and a computer just said, this is a fraudulent application, you got to really not like your job. If you're going to say no computer, you're wrong. That application's fine. So most of those manual reviews result in denials because if the computer thinks it's fraud, that person is usually not going to trump that decision. It all happens because of an incongruency of what's actually happening online. Remember Dun & Bradstreet, uh, Experian, Equifax, they're getting information from your Facebook page, from your social media pages, from your website. They have crawlers that are crawling the yellow pages. They're looking for all of this. So you got to make sure all that information is congruent, especially with your secretary of state records. This is where almost 90% of entrepreneurs mess up. They set up their secretary of state record, their business entity. Then they get their business address and phone number. Then they never go back to the secretary of state and update it. You got to make sure that you do that. If you don't do that, then the very first place that they compare your application to is secretary of state. And the first thing they find is your name, your address, your phone number doesn't match. They think the application's fraud and you're denied. It's not because of your credit. It's not because of your revenue. Guys, I can't tell you enough. Client after client after client after client, we help. We fix basic fundability stuff I'm teaching you today. And they go to the same sources that had just denied them and they get approved. So you've got to make sure that you fix this congruency, especially with Secretary of State. It's one of the biggest reasons you're getting denied and getting bad terms and you don't even understand or realize it's happening. The type of references you have, you need to set up a business bank account quickly in your business. You need to have a bank reference that you can use on these applications. As we get into 2021, more and more credit issuers want you to have references from your bank on that application. So they're going to be asking you for it more than they ever have before. Where you're, when, Whether your bank account is set up or not, you have to have a business bank account set up. So many things from your check systems credit score to your bank rating that's used to determine if you should get loans to all kinds of, of, of loans that are available through things like revenue lending. It's all based on you having that business bank account set up. Like if I had to tell you 2021, one of the five, the top five things to do to make your business fundable, having a business bank account set up would definitely be in the top five, if not the top three, you've got to get that done. The way your website and email are set up, make sure you have a professional website set up. Don't set it up on like a WEX URL. You need to own your own URL. It's very important if somebody's actually having an audio issue. So is everybody else, if you're able to, can you hear me okay? If you're in the webinar, let me know if you can hear me okay. If you don't mind, because I've got some people with some audio issues. Yes. Okay. So it looks like those audio issues might be on your end if you're in the webinar and having a hard time hearing, which that might not be okay, because everybody is saying that the audio is okay. So my apology to those that might be having issues might be on your local computer end. Okay. And the numbers you have, you need to have a DUNS number set up. I'm going to teach you today how to get it done at no cost. You need to have an EIN. Believe it or not, you could be in business and not have an EIN. So you need to have an EIN set up, and that and that is something that I'll teach you today how to do. Actually, I don't need to. You can just go to irs.gov to do that. And you need to have a BIN number, a business identification number set up with Experian, and that's something that I'll teach you how today to get that BIN number, BIN number set up as well. So even if you're fundable, you could still be denied, as I mentioned, because of potential fraud concerns. So let me explain to you again and what happens. Lenders and credit issuers, get your application. They pull secret credit reports behind the scene. They match the credit reports with this information to see if it's congruent. Some of this stuff comes from LexisNexis, Dun & Bradstreet, Experian, Small Business Financial Exchange, and Equifax, and check systems. Dun & Bradstreet, Equifax, Experian are business or commercial, or commercial credit reporting agencies. They're just like Experian, Equifax, TransUnion on the consumer side, but they populate credit reports for businesses. We know who they are. We'll talk about more of them today. LexisNexis is the root of all evil. Everything comes from LexisNexis, guys. Law enforcement, uh, insurance companies, uh, lenders, credit issuers, they're all pulling information from LexisNexis. Let me give you an example, a, a recent example. Okay, I had, got, I had a new watch and I went to get it insured. I got denied for the watch because of my LexisNexis insurance score being too low. It just happened to me a week ago. So I called them up and said, I know about LexisNexis. Why is it denied? I got from them, they're not even looking at the data. They're not even looking at it. They're just looking at the score. So she couldn't even tell me. The underwriter, I'm talking to an underwriter, can't even tell me what the data says, just tells me my score is too low. That's fine. 
that gives me enough information to go get my insurance report with LexisNexis and my score, address anything that's a concern, and then go back and apply, and I will get denied. That's why you need to know this stuff. If you know where they're getting the information and you know then how to fix it, you can come in, you can get it fixed, then you can turn around and you're able to get approved. Check systems is what is used. It is a report and score that actually looks at how you actually manage your bank account. So you need to know about that. And the SBFE, they are something you really need to know about. The SBFAE is a third-party data aggregator that is owned by its members. Its members are banks. Wells Fargo, Chase, Bank of America, they're all members of SBFE. SBFE has a very simple philosophy, which is called give to get. If you want to be a member of SBFE and get information, you have to be willing to give all information. Here's what that means. It means Bank of America, everything you put on an application, you submit to Bank of America, that goes into SBFE and Bank of America is sharing it with every other bank. So if you go to apply for a credit card and you put your revenues $300,000 a year and bank on your Bank of America application, then you go to apply with Wells Fargo and put your revenues $350,000 a year. What you might not know is that Wells Fargo and Bank of America see the information you're putting on each other's application. It happens because of SBFE. All information from what you put on an application to how you pay your bills with that loan, credit line, or credit card all gets funneled into SPFE and every bank can access it. So we don't realize this. And we oftentimes, we change the thing on an application like our revenue a little or this a little or that a little from bank to bank. We might even get a denial, think we learn lessons and go back and change the application for the next source. What we don't understand is SPFE is all sharing it anyways. They all know what you put on the other lender's application. So this is part of why you're getting denied because they're all sharing information through these third-party data aggregators. And then they know what you don't think they know. And they oftentimes think the application is fraudulent because that information is not congruent. It's how a lot of denials happen. Now, if we look at LexisNexis, here's some things that are on your LexisNexis credit report. If you've never seen it, it is the most intrusive thing you will ever see in your life. Mine is over 300 pages thick. I could grab it right now and pull it up. It's a book. Here's some of the stuff that's on there. Every home you've ever owned, the value of the home, the sales prices, the building materials of your home, the homeowners association, the number of bedrooms, baths, roofing units, AC units, deeds, mortgages, title companies, interest rates, loan amounts, terms, loan types from every mortgage, every phone number and email address you've ever had in your life, every license you've had, firearms, boating, mortgage, pilot, and any violations on those licenses, traffic tickets, felonies, misdemeanors, sex offender records. Give you an example. When I went to get my SBA loan, they asked me if I'd ever been convicted of like felonies, misdemeanors. And I said, no, I'm a straight shooter. Okay. And then they came back to me and said, mm, sorry, you actually have two misdemeanors on your record. Uh, now you have to explain what happened and why you lied to us. Guys, I had to literally pull a background check on myself to even remember what they were talking about. And all this happened when I was in my teen years, when I was in the military, and I had to do with popping a wheelie on a motorcycle, trying to impress a female cop. There's a whole stories behind this stuff. It was awesome at the time. But 20, 30 years later, it's still haunting me because it's on my LexisNexis credit report. I don't even think about this stuff, but it's one reason, an example of how this information is hurting your ability to be able to turn around and get money aliases, all name variation, marriage, divorce records, every vehicle you've ever known, including VIN number, every insurance policy you've ever had, and the details of those insurance policies, every business you've ever been associated with. So because I used to be in the consumer credit industry, I get denied a lot of times for bank accounts, for merchant accounts. When we figured out they were getting it from LexisNexis, we deleted and had that information removed. I never had those issues again. Another example of how understanding where they're getting the data and correcting it will help you. Family info, including children, loans, leases, aircraft and boating records, public records, including bankruptcies, judgments, lawsuits, and liens. When we went to get our SBA loan, they wanted to actually ask for my home as collateral. Very weird request considering our account receivables are worth way more than the loan amount. Come to find out there was two judgments on there that they didn't like that was on my Lexus Texas credit report, which weren't on Equifax TransUnion or Experian. Worst, worst part, they weren't even legitimate judgments. They were wrong. 
So we had to go through and prove to the lender that the judgments weren't correct, then go to LexisNexis and fix that issue. But once we fixed it, our ability to get loans, credit cards, and credit lines was significantly better. One more example of where they're getting information and why having it not addressed on your part becomes a problem of getting financing. Education information, including degrees you have, schools, dates, attended, graduated, military records, online records, all of your short-term credit. Guys, that is your LexisNexis credit report. It's not all that's on there. I just ran out of room on the slide. So there's this is the kind of stuff that lenders and credit issuers and insurance companies and law enforcement knows about you. Here's where they're getting it. Get the reports and fix it. Our clients, we get check systems credit report. We get LexisNexis credit reports. We help them get those. We help them fix inaccuracies because it's so important. It is such a big deal. That is why I'm teaching you about this today. So even the slightest change to one fundability factor can turn an approval into denial. And this is one of our clients, Herman, that that happened with. With Credit Suite, your one-on-one consultant calls you every 24 hours to signing up. They call you at least five times in a week in the first two weeks. And then thereafter, even though it's been several years, I still get calls. My one-on-one -on -one consultant still call me every other Wednesday without fail, and that's absolutely incredible. My favorite line of credit I got is a $10,000 Amazon card I use to purchase things low and sell high on different marketplaces. I also was able to get a $40,000 Amex business card. None of my accounts show up my personal credit report, so if I max them out, it doesn't hurt me personally. So I was able to purchase two properties in Cleveland, Ohio, and it's been a blessing. Do you want a $40,000 Amex card? What Herman's story is, is that we fix some issues with his fundability as part of our process with our business advisors. And he turned around and went from getting a denial on his credit card to getting that approval. That's what the power of fundability is. It takes these credit lines, these credit cards, these loans you once applied for and got denied, and it turns around and starts making those easier to turn those around and get approvals because of issues with fundability. It's not your qualifications, guys. In a lot of cases, it's the fundability not matching up. That's why you got denied. So fix fundability and it makes all the difference. Now, when you get a home loan, when you get a car loan, when you get a, a, a credit card, you know your consumer credit's being pulled. You know it's important. The same applies for a business. But let me tell you why you might not know that. In the consumer world, there's a law called the Fair Credit Reporting Act. And this law requires if a lender pulls your credit report, first, they need your permission to pull your credit report. It's called permissible purpose. Secondly, if they pull your credit report and deny you based on something there, they have to serve you up at the letter explaining to you why they denied you. The Fair Credit Reporting Act does not apply in the business world. It does not apply to business credit reporting agencies or business lenders or credit issuers. So the problem is, is that first, they don't need your permission to pull your business credit reports like they do consumer. So they're getting these credit reports from us to make all these decisions, suppliers, lenders, credit issuers, insurance companies. We don't know they're getting it and they're making all kinds of decisions based on the information and not telling us because they don't need to. They're not required to tell us they denied us because of what was on Dun and Bradstreet. So it's all happening behind the scenes. We're applying for credit. We're applying for a loan. We're getting denied. And we don't know that the reason is because our business credit quality sucks or does is not established. Now, you might say, my business credit quality doesn't suck. It could suck and you don't even know it does. And here's why I'm explaining that. Two of the credit reporting agencies, as I'm about to teach you, will give you failing business credit scores even if you don't have any credit. So this is why a lot of times you're getting denied that loan credit card or credit line to be able to, that you want, because you're not able to get approved. You're not able to get the high limits that you want. You're not able to get the rates and terms you want all because of your business credit quality. So we got to fix that today during this training. So you want to get approved with business credit, regardless of consumer credit quality. It's one of the huge benefits. You don't have to have a personal guarantee. I'm going to teach you how to get this credit without personal liability. Okay, there's no consumer credit inquiries, a huge benefit of building business credit. Well, even if you have great personal credit, you don't want to have inquiries on your credit report when you're trying to get business accounts. Okay, some loans, credit lines, you need to. But credit cards, you don't. If you're going to get a business credit card, you shouldn't put an inquiry on your personal credit report. And that's a big deal because those inquiries will cost you a tremendous amount of money in financing that you could get if they're not there. So I don't care if your credit's excellent or bad, you need to prevent these inquiries from happening. And in order, a way to prevent it from happening is to make sure they're not even pulling our consumer credit reports. If you're building business credit the right way, I'm going to show you this, you're going to get limits 10 to 100 times higher than with consumer credit. A lot of our clients, and I'll show you actual approvals, are getting $10,000 limit credit cards 30 and 60 days into this process. It sounds outrageous, but it's really not. 
Businesses spend more money than consumers. The limits on these accounts are way higher. So not only is it easy to build business credit if you get the right steps, and I'll show you these, then you also have a chance, not have a chance, you will also almost always see a significantly higher approval amount than what you'd see on the consumer credit side. The credit's very fast to get because your scores are based on how you pay your bills. Dun & Bradstreet, Equifax, and Experian Commercial all have five scores, but the primary score they use is all based the same way. It's based on how you've paid your bills in the past. If you pay them early, you get a 90 score. If you pay them on time, you get an 80 score. If you pay them late, you get 70 score. If you pay it 60 days late, you get a 50 score. It's all based on how you pay your bills. So all we have to do is get you accounts that report on your business credit reports that you pay on time or early. That gives you a good score. Then we have a foundation with those accounts reporting, a good score. We use that as our foundation to springboard off of to get all the credit that we really want. I'm going to show you how to do that today, but it's very easy to do compared to consumer credit because business credit scores are primarily just based on how you pay your bills. Inc., SBA, Entrepreneur, Forbes, they all tell you to build business credit for the same reason. You've got to separate your consumer and your commercial credit report, okay? So that being said, some people said that they're not able to hear, So, but I think everybody's okay. Okay, so everybody's good. All right, so... Uh, and somebody asks, is it truly live? I love that. There's no reason, no way to prove that when it's actually live. So you've got to constrain, you've got to separate these consumer and these commercial credit reports. Okay. If you don't do that, you're always going to be personally liable for what happens in your business. But most importantly, I think the number one reason that you want to build business credit, this information is publicly accessible to anybody that wants it. Lenders, credit issuers, suppliers, prospects, clients, competitors, people that want to buy your business. Anybody can and will access your business credit reports. So you've got to build the business credit reports because this is your credibility. This is the front-facing credibility that all of these sources will see, and any of them that want to can see your business credit reports. As a matter of fact, if you go to DMB, Equifax, and or Experian, you will see that the number one thing they do on their credit reports is they actually ask you if you want to get a credit report for your business or somebody else's business. So you've really got to make sure that you build your business credit reports. If you don't do that, then the problem is, is that you don't look credible, okay? And that is one of the reasons that you need to make sure that you're actually doing this. If you don't, then what happens is you just don't have uh, what looks like a credible business to the people that you want to make sure that you actually have a, credit, a credible business set up with. So... Uh, you also need to know that you can be issued a failing business credit score, even if you have no credit reporting. Okay. And that happens. And I'll show you exactly what this looks like. Experian and Equifax will create a failing business credit report and score for you, even if you have no credit. Now, Dun & Bradstreet requires three accounts in 2021 beyond your business credit reports before they'll create a score. But Equifax and Experian will create a score if they have one piece of what they call firmographic information. That means if they know your business name, your address, and your NAICS or your industry code, they will give you a failing credit report. Here's what I mean. 28 score out of 100, which is a failing score, $1,000 credit limit, that happens. And you can see current financial stability score, about a higher risk as you can get. And this is somebody that has nothing on their business credit reports whatsoever. Hold on one second. Go. Wait. All right. Sorry about my two second delay. My dog's going crazy. And if I didn't let her in here, I think she was going to scratch through the door. So this is somebody that has no credit on their Experian commercial credit report, but is still issued a failing score. Now, here's the good news. If you have only one account on your business credit report, you can go from a failing score to an excellent score. I'll show you. This person has a 96, almost as high as you can get. The credit limit is going up. And we can also see they're very low risk. And we see that they only have one account on their business credit report. I'm going to show you what this account is as we get further into the webinar. So what I'm saying here is that one account can take you from failing score to good score. Here, I'm showing you all from an actual commercial credit report what actually looks like. So you can see they went from a failing credit score here to an excellent credit score because they added one account on their business credit report. Guys, this is why we're here today. Think about it. Go imagine having the worst credit report you can have adding one account that you pay on time for, you can see less than a hundred dollars and going from as bad as you can get to as good as you can get. You can't do that with anything else other than commercial credit. 
But this is how commercial credit works. We've got to get good credit on the credit report, paid as agreed, since scores are based on how they pay, then all you have to do is pay as agreed, and that gives you a good score. Now we use the newly established credit profile, the good scores, as the foundation to come in and get all different types of credit. So here, let me show you what else happens as we continue to do this. This is the secret sauce they don't teach you. As you continue to grow your credit, the approval amounts will get higher and higher and higher the more accounts that show on your business credit reports. I'll show you how this works. So here is a $1,000 credit limit. I showed you that to begin with, right? There's the first little image. And these are snapshots from real Experian commercial credit reports. I could show Equifax as well, but I'm just using Experian as an example. $1,000 credit limit recommendation. First of all, you ever wonder why you get one limit one place and another limit another place or why your limits become higher and higher in time? I'm showing you from a credit report perspective why that happens. Credit limit recommendation, $1,000. Remember, this person had no credit on the credit report. Okay, this was the one that the second one I showed you, they had one account on the commercial credit reports. But here's what's interesting. They went from $1,000 recommendation of credit to 2,500, two and a half times just because they had one account on the credit report. Okay, that's interesting. Now here's somebody that's being recommended for nearly $7,000 of credit. Please note, the credit score is bad. It's still not even a good score. But yet they're being recommended for $7,000 worth of credit and they have two accounts on their business credit reports. Here's somebody being recommended for nearly $16,000 of credit. And look, they have one, two, three accounts on their business credit report. Here's somebody that's being recommended for nearly $66,000 worth of credit. They've got one, two, three, four accounts on their business credit report. And here's what we all want to see. $724,000 credit recommendation limit, and they have 15 accounts on their business credit reports. We noticed a trend and a formula in helping 42,000 people through this process, and here's what we noticed. The more accounts you put on your business credit report, the higher that credit limit recommendation is. Now, you might say, do credit issuers really look at that? This box is the most important box on your credit report. This is what Experian pulls out and puts in a separate box to show credit issuers because it's what they care about most. There's three things in this box. An IntelliScore, which is the score I taught you that's based on the average of how you pay your bills, the average time frame. Do you pay early? Do you pay late? How early or late do you pay? The second is called a Financial Stability Risk Score. Remember that second credit report I showed you the really high risk with this? This literally depicts your risk of going bankrupt in your business in the next 12 months, going out, ceasing operations, shutting your doors. And the third is the credit limit recommendation. And by the way, financial stability risk takes into account financial data. There's a reason that these three things are the first three things they box off and show credit issuers. It's what credit issuers look at most. So credit issuers really look at credit limit recommendation. And the bottom line is the more accounts you add to that business credit report, we've seen this over 42,000 reports, do, 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 the higher that recommendation of credit. So if you want to get loans, if you want to get credit lines, if you want to get credit cards with the highest amounts, this is exactly how you do it. This is the formula that we've seen that they're using to determine how high those amounts should be. Don't get me wrong. Okay, I've spent 20 years in lending and I can tell you that other factors like your revenue and other things will absolutely tie into this. But the number one trend that we've seen is the more accounts on a business credit report, the higher the approval amounts are. It's just the way that it is. Okay, so that's a lot of examples of how that works. Now, here's one of my favorite clients, Christy, and, and she's one of my favorites because I saw her go from having challenges doing this on her own, hired three companies and failed. And then she came in and built like a multi-truck operation. It was like absolutely insane. But I like this because it shows you how business credit progression works. She started with small accounts, two to five grand. In my world, that's small, two to five. Exxon, Tractor Supply, Amazon. She started to jump up into the $10,000, $15,000 range here. We see Lowe's, Apple, Shell, Murphy, USA, Office Depot, Sears. Then she starts to jump to the boom. You watch this jump in tiers. She immediately goes from about the 15 range almost immediately up to that top tier of what credit issuers look at, 40, 50. Remember, we saw that testimonial from Herman. He also said 40. 40 seems to be that next tier. Once you start proving 
that you're using 15, $20,000 limit cards, they bumps up to Best Buy 40, Dell 40, Pilot Flying J 50, et cetera, et cetera. She got $185,000 of Ford. You should see this truck. I think I have a picture of this truck that she's buying. It's insane. So here's her actual credit report showing that her scores were high as she's building it. Here's one of her approvals that she used to get 15 grand. Here's her holding a bunch of her cards and says, hey, um, a good if you follow Ty Crandall's program, you'll get what you need talking about the business credit approvals that she has. Here's a $150,000 credit line that she got approved for. So it gives you an idea of what's possible as one person. She's on our million dollar club. One of many of our clients who have obtained over a million dollars in business credit and used it, I'd like to say to fund her business. But the reality is, is we're entrepreneurs. We're like, bing, bing. We're like ADD, right? I don't know about the rest of you. That's how I am. So she opened multiple businesses like a lot of our clients do, like Herman did where he said, hey, I sell stuff online. I buy it low and sell it high. I buy real estate. Th that's what happens is these business owners buy, build business credit as you can, then they're able to actually use it and end up running multiple businesses, which is exactly what Christine did. So here's some recent approvals so you know what's possible. Because I, I get kind of, I, I, it kind of drives me crazy. Sometimes people try to sell you that you're going to get some $250,000 credit line building business credit. Let me show you what real business credit is. A lot of it, you start with vendors. Then you move up to retail credit. Then you move up to Visa, MasterCard type credit, auto financing, computer leases. Okay, so here's some actual approvals. Here's a, uh, you know, 16, uh, from a $16,000 Sam's Club card. Here's a $3,000 Sam's Club as well. Here's an Amazon that bumped it to five, to 5,000. It's now 15 or $10,000 with Amazon, guys. Can buy a lot of stuff to do a lot of damage with a ten thousand dollar credit line at Amazon. Sam's Club for eight grand, Jiffy Lube for fourteen hundred, Amazon for fifty five hundred. Okay, here's a gas card with uh, no PG. She also got Uline, Quill, Crown Office Supply, Suma, um, amongst many others. And here's some of those approvals with Texacon, with Amazon, with Chevron. Here's a two thousand dollar limit with pennies. Here's a ten thousand dollar Sam's Mastercard. There's a difference between a Sam's Club card you can use in Sam's Club. And Sam's MasterCard, which let you can use it anywhere. You can use the Sam's Club MasterCard at Costco, for example. It's a cash credit card. Okay, here's uh, another approval for $3,500 with Amazon, a $7,500 with Amazon, or a, let me see, $3,500. Oh, they looks like they bumped it to $7,500. Pilot Flying J as well. Here's an Exxon approval for $1,000. Here's a uh, another approval for three thousand, and on and on. There, uh, another ten thousand dollar was Sunbelt Rental. Here's a Navy Federal Credit Union approval. Here's a bunch of approvals with Navy Federal Credit Union, Capital One, Spark, and a Fleet Card right here. Dell for ten grand. Oh, bunch of approvals here, right? Strategic Network Solution, Granger, T-Shirt Club, HD Supply, Monetize Your Marketplace, National Pen, Sunbelt Rentals, all with different approvals. Okay, of different approval amounts. Here's another approval for twelve thousand five hundred. Here's a Wawa approval for four thousand. Here's a forty thousand dollar lease with Dell that's approved. Here's a Suma office supplies, a five thousand uh, dollar Kanoko Philip seventy six card, a SunTrust uh, account, and a twenty five hundred dollar with Robert's handbag boutique. I don't know where that place is. Oh no, that's that's your approval. I want to buy handbags from you. I got, I, I got not for me personally. People around me. Here's an approval with Hertz. Another Sam's Club approval here, Crown Office Supplies vendor, $10,000 Sam's card. You get the idea, okay? The bottom line is, is that that's what's possible with this building business credit. You get all these high limit accounts without the personal guarantee and credit check. Here's Kylan Trower, one of our clients. I believe the business finance suite is the best step-by-step paint-by-number system for securing anywhere from fifty grand to $250,000 of business credit that reports on your business credit reports and helps you separate your personal and business credit report. What I like most is I have access to actual coaches that will take you by the hand and walk you through the system and answer specific questions that you have related to business. It's an amazing opportunity. So the reason I show you this is that this is what happens. Kylan's the million-dollar club. He's one of the ones that's established more than a million got in the business as a partner of ours, and then goes around and built, he was a gym coach. He wanted to get out of it. He built the whole sales team offering business credit financing, and he goes around, and this is what he does, is he builds business credit financing. He's got over a million bucks himself as well. But the nice thing is, is that keep in mind, the other side of this, beyond using the free information and doing it yourself, is to work with us, 
And if you're working with our software and our coaches, it literally condenses years of this process to only months as Kylan's kind of outlining there. So here's some points before I show you some of the steps. Any business can do this. I don't care if you're a for-profit. I don't care if you're a non-profit. I don't care if you're high risk. I don't care about your NAICS code. If you own a United States business, even if you live in Canada, even if you live in the Ukraine, as long as you have a business in the United States, you can do this. Startups, nonprofits, owners outside the U.S., it works with multiple businesses, what I'm showing you here today. You can get approved even when you can't get any other kind of loan or credit line, and here's why. If you want to get any kind of loan or credit line, you need one of these three things, cash flow, credit, or collateral. I call it the 3C formula. You need one. I don't care. I don't care what kind of loan or credit line you get. You're not going to get a loan or credit line without one of those three, cash flow, credit, or collateral, but you can still get business credit. You don't need to have cash flow, which means you can get it as a startup. Your credit can be bad because there's no credit check. And you also don't have to have any kind of collateral either, which is needed for a lot of loans like SBA. Anybody can get what I'm going to show you today. So if you're trying to get, get your business off the ground or growing where you want it to be in 2021, and you're saying, I just need money, but my credit sucks. I don't have the cash flow to get the business started yet. I don't have collateral. Nobody will give me money. You can get this. You can build business credit. You don't need any of that stuff in order to still be able to build business credit. So how do we do this? Well, first we get initial credit and there's two ways to do this. But initial credit is credit that reports to the business credit reporting agency. Remember what I showed you? We've got to go from no credit report to adding one or more accounts to give us a foundation and a score. So we've got to find credit that reports to the business credit reporting agencies. That's hard because 97% of trade vendors out there don't report the credit that they give you to the credit reporting agencies. One of my buddies, John, buys massive amounts of media for his clients. He does; They do all kinds of advertising, marketing, media plays for their customers. He got denied for a credit line. Actually, they called his credit line due, which is even worse, meaning he had outstanding credit line. They said, you have to pay it off within a month. We want all of our money back. We're shutting your line down because his business credit quality was bad. He called me in a panic. And I said, John, the problem is, is none of those vendors you're paying actually are reporting the credit payments to the business credit reporting agencies. You got to get credit with vendors that do report, number one. Number two, credit issuers got to approve you with no current credit check they, or no credit, meaning you can't have any established business credit. And we need people that will give you credit even when you have none. So we've got to have very two specific criteria of people that we want vendor-wise to build business credit. They got to report. And they got to give us credit when we have none. And we have options here. We can either use a personal guarantee and good consumer credit to jumpstart the process, or we could do it without personal credit even being looked at with no personal guarantee. We have two options to be able to do this. So the number one, the first option I'm going to teach you is based on you providing a personal guarantee and having good personal credit. That's okay. Your credit suck. Don't worry. I'm going to give you two options around that right now. First of all, with this program, you can get up to $150,000 in credit lines with 0% rates. It's no doc. You can get it as a startup, no bank statements, no tax returns. So in COVID, even if your revenue declined year after year, or month after year, even if it's still declined, you can still get this. It's still the number one funding program we have going into 2021. You could take cash out of the credit lines. That's why I call it a hybrid. Credit cards, the biggest benefit is 0% rates. Credit lines, the biggest benefit is we could take cash out of the lines and not pay 20% like we pay on cards. Put them together, we get a credit line hybrid. We get a hybrid of the two. We get the benefit of taking cash out of the credit line and the benefit of a credit card is 0%. And we get this insane program where we could take cash out of a credit line at 0%, $150,000 worth of credit. We can buy properties. We can do all kinds of stuff that we can't use the credit line with. Now, credit line hybrid, you have a card. You can use the card for everything that you need a card for, but some things you can't, you can't go buy a property on a Visa card. I've asked title companies that nobody seems to know why, but you can't, but you can take the cash out of that credit line at 0% to buy a property for flipping as an example of how this can be used. Startups are welcome with this. Credit partners are welcome. Even if your credit sucks, 50% of that, of who we help get approved for this program are using a credit partner, a family member, a friend, a potential investor, et cetera. Maybe it's, and let me give you an example. If I go to my dad today and I say, dad, I need 25 grand to get a business off the ground. My dad would go liquidate 25 grand worth of stocks and give it to me. 
But I can say, Dad, I need 25 grand to get my business off the ground. I, I don't need the money. I need you to sign as a credit partner for me. Then he signs as a partner. I get the credit line for 25 grand. He's not hurt in any way because the credit reports on the business credit reports, not the consumer credit reports. Okay. So as a result of that, I'm helping build my business credit. Now, let me clarify with credit line hybrid, you have a choice. You can get max funding, some consumer reporting, some business reporting, or you can just get business reporting. You'll be given the choice. You choose that. But if you have a credit partner, just get the business reporting. None of it even shows on their credit report. You're building your business credit because these report to the business credit reporting agencies. So even if your credit's bad, you could still use a credit partner that's willing to sign for you. You know, collateral or cash flow requirements. So again, even if you don't have cash flow, even if your cash flow is declining, even if you don't have collateral, you're still able to get it. Okay. And you can get multiple card approvals. So you can get five to eight different kind of cards. Okay. With this one, uh, one program. Now, why that matters is this. I don't need to tell you. I already taught you. Remember when we showed all these different accounts and we saw that the more accounts that we get, the higher the recommendation of credit, this could add five or more accounts on your business credit reports. They're all cash accounts with high limits. So imagine starting a business credit report with five, 10 and $12,000 credit lines on there. Okay. That's what credit line hybrid will help you do. It expedites business credit building, gets you access to nearly 150 grand. How much you get dependent on the highest credit limit account you have now on your credit credit report. You get it at 0% rates, no doc. Okay. Phenomenal program. Okay. And again, uh, they will charge you a, a funding fee. The lending sources all do. Usually it's like 12%. Our clients pay like 9.99 because we negotiate that down. We don't keep the money. We give all that money back to our clients, but they roll that fee right into the credit lines the same as they do with SBA. Bottom line, you pay no money up front. You decide business or consumer cards. You decide how much money you want. It, I mean, they'll, they'll cap you typically at five to eight times the highest credit limit account you have. But if you don't want that much, you don't have to get it. And whatever fee you pay, they roll right into the actual credit lines. So that's way number one of building initial business credit. Now, way number two is we use vendors. We look at vendors that offer net terms, net 30, net 55, net Amazon gives you a net 55 account, for example, gives you 55 days to pay back whatever you put on that credit line. There's no credit check. There's no personal guarantee. Okay. A lot of them, um, you can use vendors with that you would typically buy normal stuff with office supplies, et cetera. Uh, and some of them have a minimum purchase requirement. They want you to spend 50 bucks in order to report to the business credit reporting agencies. And remember, you've got to use vendors that do report the credit to the reporting agencies. Here's my favorites for 2021. Uline, they sell all shipping supplies, Crown Office Supplies. Crown Office Supplies, very familiar. I know the CEO well. And uh, they report to Dun & Bradstreet, Equifax, and Experian. I like that a lot because that's three payment experiences. I'm going to give you another tip right now. So an account, one account reported on one business credit report is called a payment experience. So if you want to speed up business credit building, then we want to get more payment experiences faster. So in order to do that, we want to work with accounts that report to more than one business credit reporting agency. If we have more than one business credit reporting agency, then what happens is then we have multiple payment experiences. So that means if I go to Crown Office Supplies, for example, for example, then what happens is we can come in with Crown Office Supplies and we can actually get three payment experiences because they report to three different business credit reporting agencies. So what matters here is that we want to get accounts with those that report to multiple reporting agencies because it helps us build business credit faster. I keep looking to the left here because I'm going to show you what our clients see and how this is actually used. So I love Crown Office Supplies. They have a $99 annual fee, but they'll approve anybody. They report to all three reporting agencies. It's an absolute fantastic starter account. Lachlan and Associates, we're back, baby. Lockwood and Associates used to be one of my favorite vendors I recommended for business credit reporting. There was this gray area of whether they were reporting the credit to the reporting agencies or not. Got the CEO on the phone the other day and said, what's going on? He brought his team up and I said, you're losing a ton of business. We have a whole community out there that, that will work with you if you report. 
They are verified. They are reporting to the business reporting agencies. So Lachlan and Associates, they offer some really cool corporate setup type services that could work for a lot of us. Some report to the business credit reporting agencies and supply works. They sell all kinds of things too that our business use. These are some of them I haven't talked about for years or at all. These are my favorite vendors going into 2021. I told you earlier that if you have a business license, I would tell you about a source that will give you a $2,500 credit line. That is Granger. Granger is notorious for giving you a $2,500 credit line just because you actually have a business license. Now, I was talking about payment experiences. This is the system, the business finance suite our clients use to build their business credit. You can see here the difference. This is why we make it so obvious. Now, these are all grayed out. Our clients can see what's not recommended. They don't have enough payment experiences to qualify for these accounts yet. And then we, we light them up with green or orange to say, hey, these, I say green or orange because I'm colorblind. I still don't know if it's green or orange. So we light it up with green or orange to tell people, hey, you can qualify for these. So these are ones that I don't have enough trade lines per my sample dummy account to qualify. But you can see here that this reports to DMB, this reports to DMB, this reports to all three. So what I've taught you so far, you know, this will help you build business credit faster because it's three payment experiences, not one. Okay, if we go to Meyer, it's three payment experiences. If we go to Quill, it's only one. If we go to Luke Oil, they report to all three, it's three payment experiences. These are not starter vendors. These are revolving credit, which I'll teach you in a minute. But you see that importance of knowing the, the where they report because that is what will tie in and what will give you more payment experiences and help you through this process even faster. Okay, so steps to build business credit. Well, we talked about step one, two, fundability. Then we move on and we build the initial credit using credit line hybrid or vendor accounts with five payment experiences. I say accounts, but now you're, you know, you're knowledgeable now. You know what payment experiences are. So with five payment experiences, you can move on to retail credit. You get that I gave you a big tip there. If you got crown office supplies as a vendor, you already got three of five payment experiences with one account. So I just made it really easy for you to get to the retail credit tier. Retail credit is here. Retail credit is all of these guys. It's Office Depot. It's Home Depot. It's uh, you know, it's Lowe's. It's Amazon. It's Staples. It's Tiger Direct. It's Pilot. It's you know, it's all these retailers. It's Amazon. It's Cobb's, Costco, and Sam's Club, and and and, and Walmart. But it's retail credit. So with five accounts, we start to get to retail credit. Okay, and I say start to get to for a reason, because look at this. If you look at our business finance suite works, you can see that we have it broke down into tiers. The tiers are based on how many accounts you need, how many payment experiences you need to get approved. So you can see here, we're saying you need six to move into this step. If you have six, you can get these. If you have three, you can get this tier. If you have you know 10, you can get to this tier, et cetera. So you can start to get them. Some retailers will give them to you with five. Other retailers are going to require that you have 10 or more payment experiences, but you can start to get retail credit with five. Hint, Amazon's one of the first retailers you get real easy to get with them when you have five payment experiences reporting. Then you move to eight accounts. Then we get into what's called fleet credit. Fleet credit is used for transportation companies that need to put fuel in vehicles and and uh, and uh, maintain vehicles and and be able to fix vehicles. It's it's credit at places like Exxon Mobil here. It's places like uh, uh, Valvoline. It's places here like uh, Pilot Flying J. Okay, Seven Eleven. That's what we call fleet credit. So most of this is available on a revolving basis without net terms when you have eight accounts reporting. And still into 2021, if you want to get Visa card, MasterCard credit, which I showed you real examples of, you can get there with 14 accounts on the business credit report. So remember, by accounts, you're an insider now. So you know that that means payment experiences. And you know if you get one vendor like Crown Office Supplies that reports the DMB, Equifax, and Experian, that's three payment experiences. So we understand that with 14 accounts, we have can get cash credit, but one of those has to have a $10,000 high limit. In order to get a $10,000 limit, you have to be using the credit you get. One of the worst questions I ever get is, 
How long does it take to get to the end? You don't get it. You're never going to get there if you think of it that way. The way Christine got over a million dollars worth of credit was she got credit she actually needed to grow her business. She came in and got real credit she needed. She got Dell. Then she used the Dell to come in and actually get credit with Dell, right? Now, guys, I'm, I, first time I've asked you, if, if you're getting value, just do me one favor. Hit the like button. Hit the love button. If you really love me, hit the share button. That tells the social platforms this is valuable info and they'll get other people in here, okay? So the bottom line is, is that you can actually get to the top tier if you have a $10,000 limit, 14 accounts reporting, but you can get a $10,000 way higher than you think. You just have to be using the credit you got along the way. Don't go get a Uline and spend $100 and get a crown and spend $100 and then get Amazon and spend $100. As you look back, and if you remember the credit reports I showed you initially, your commercial credit reports will show the recent amount of credit you've used on that account. If you're not using them very much or buying very much on these accounts, you're never going to get a $10,000 limit. But if you're actually using the credit that you're getting, then you're going to get $10,000 limit and higher and higher the more accounts you get as long as you're using those accounts. Now, post-COVID, underwriting relationships really matter, Okay. This really is a big difference. Don't authorize a per... Okay, so some things that are some extra notes. What I mean by that is that credit line hybrid, for example, we saw underwriters shut down. You couldn't even get a chase card unless you were calling an underwriter and had a relationship to get approved. Everybody was coming to us saying, why is every application with Chase and Bank of America denied? They denied everybody. So relationships with underwriters really matter. Having that privileged information really matters. And keep in mind, we have a whole data team at Credit Suite all they do is call all these credit sources on a regular basis to make sure that all of our information in the finance suite is updated. If you're not working with us, that's okay. Then formulate your own relationships with underwriters because that really matters. It also matters that you don't authorize a personal guarantee or credit check. Look, one of the changes that we saw take place over the last few years is the government stepped in and mandated credit issuers and banks to be. So if you go to get a Staples or Office Depot, they're going to ask for your social to verify your identity, you need to make sure that you're only supplying it to them that based on them not doing a credit check and you not providing a personal guarantee. You have to clarify that now that you have to give your social if it's underwritten by a bank. It becomes a necessity. Otherwise, you'll be offering a guarantee and the decision will be based on, based on personal credit. If you don't want that to happen, you have to clarify that when you apply. Okay, use the credit you get. We talked about that. That's important to continue to get higher and higher limits. You want to pay your bills early. We talked about this as well. Your credit scores are based on how early you pay. And you also need to make sure you get loans and credit lines that report. When I apply for a loan, a credit card or a credit line, I always get to an underwriter and ask, where does this report? If I have a chance between a loan at one place and somewhere else, one place reports the loan, one place doesn't, I always go with the place that reports the loan on my business credit reports. But you have to be careful by reporting they may be telling you what's called a UCC filing. A UCC filing just tells other people that you have an outstanding loan. It doesn't show your, your payments aren't reporting. So you want to ask them, hey, if I'm paying my pay, payments as agreed, are you reporting those payments to a business credit reporting agency? If so, which one? And try to get loans that report to the business credit reporting agencies. I'm going to give you an example. We have a $100,000 credit line that reports to Experian, no personal guarantee, that's not based on consumer credit quality. If you you can get up to a hundred hundred thousand dollars or up to that's the ceiling, but it's based on how much you process every month in merchant account transactions. So if you process credit cards, you can get that high limit of what you process in a month advanced you in a credit line that reports to Experian without a personal guarantee. We found that credit line because we're conscientious about making sure that we work with lenders and credit issuers that report. So again, you want to check and make sure that the company you're working with or the loan that you get actually reports. Employee number. When you're filing annual reports, a lot of us are about ready to file annual reports into 2021. You need to make sure that you understand the repercussions of the number of employees that you put on the Secretary of State filing because this is used in lieu of financial data to determine scores like your financial stability score. Remember that score I taught you earlier that depicts your risk of going bankrupt every in the next 12 months? That's made up of financial data. Remember I told you that, okay? But here's the problem. If they don't have financial data, i.e. your tax returns, which you can submit to them if you choose to, the business reporting agencies, but if they don't have it, 
They look at the number of employees you have to determine the financial stability of your business. I have no idea why. It seems absurd to me, but they do. So you, again, if you're putting zero employees, zero to five, just keep in mind that that will hurt your financial scores with the business credit reporting agency. I'm not telling you to lie. I'm just saying you need to understand when you make X decision, Y result. I'm just teaching you Y result of X decision. You just need to know that that's how that's done. And that's why if you have good financials, you might want to submit them to DMV. You're at the end of 2020. You really want to make sure that you're going actually at the end of going into 2021 as we are, you want to make sure at the end of 2020 that you take tax returns. And if you can show some kind of profit, profitability will go a long way to helping you get financing. And you can then submit those financials to DMB and overcome that number of employees. So you've got to build business credit in order to get the highest approval amounts at the best terms. Here is our business credit building matrix. There is nearly 200 factors that we use into that. Uh, and again, the reason I show you that is that even though I make this out to be uh, fairly easy, uh, here's the kind of questions that get asked all the time, right? People are asking all kinds of questions all the time. We get hundreds and hundreds on our social platforms. We come in on a Monday and we have 500 questions on our videos because people, even though they look at this process, they get stuck along the way. I don't want you to think it's easy. I want you to realize that there's a lot of places you're going to get stuck. There's a lot of things that can trip you up. And again, that's why working with experts helps you, right? You take that difficult path of doing it on your own and you condense it to getting it done much faster and much easier. Here's one of our clients, Josh. One thing that's beautiful about Credit Suite is that you start with baby steps. The first thing that we did is get a couple of revolving credit lines and store credit. Then we graduated to gas cards. Then we ended up getting a very nice line of credit at Amazon. Then we worked our way up and got a very, very nice SBA loan. Thanks to Credit Suite, we were able to really get our business finances in order from what looks good to potential lenders. Remember, we talked about fundability and potential creditors, and we became very attractive to lenders. Went from not being able to get a loan to in the newer phases of the business getting an SBA loan. The best options are always available for those who have their credit game locked down. And that's what Credit Suite's platform allows you to do. We've been able to make smart investments in staffing, marketing systems, sales systems, product development, all these things before Credit Suite we really couldn't do. I just don't have to stress as much because we've got money in the bank to take advantage of opportunities. I'm not a stress anymore. I can keep a bank account that has plenty of cushion there. And that cushion just honestly, it makes me a better dad. It makes me a better husband because I'm not stressing out. I, I love this. And I love this because Josh has become a good friend of mine. And my, my hair literally stands on... Uh, end when I read it because I'm a dad, right? And I all I, I do everything I do for the sake of my kids. And so this always touches me because it really makes me, I feel the same way. When you have money in the bank and COVID hits, you're not stressed. When things are unpredictable, you're not stressed. And what I found is the way out of not being able to sleep at night as more than 50% of business owners can't because they can't get the capital is just having access to revolving credit you can use. When COVID hit, we freaked out like a lot of people did. And what we did was we relied on our revolving credit to pay our bills until we figured out what was going to happen. We had that luxury because we built our business credit and were able to access a lot of revolving credit. A lot of people didn't, and they really struggled. So the key to success, the key to that peace of mind is just knowing that you have that money available. So look, as an entrepreneur, you should be able to get the money you need when you need it, but not knowing the approval standards, not knowing how to build your business credit, not being able to access financing is probably one of the things that's holding you back. Well, look, our system, if, if you're really interested in the shortcut, our business finance suite, it does all of those with you. You're working with coaches. You're, you've seen a lot of people along the way, the results they're getting, the success they're having. When you're working with us, we're giving you 24-7 access to our business finance suite to do this in English or Spanish. You're getting business advisors that know way more about this stuff than I do. They're where I get my information from that hold your hand and literally walk you through this process. Maybe not literally walk you through. They hold your hand and walk you through the process. I, I corrected myself because I read somewhere that literally is the most misused word in 2020. So I'm fixing that. We help set up your business name the right way, your entity, your EIN, your address, your toll-free number. We spun, we list you with 411 without paying the money that you're going to pay list yourself to do it. We help you make sure your website, your email address is set up. We actually integrate. Remember those secret credit bureaus I told you about? We integrate with them. We're the only company that takes their back-end information and makes it available for business owners on the front end. We help you get check systems. We help you get LexisNexis. We help you fix those credit reports to be in compliant. Bank account, merchant account set up. We help you get your BIN number with business with Experian. We Dunn's number with Dun and Bradstreet without paying for any of that. 
We help you dispute and fix any inaccuracies on your business credit report. We have the largest supply of starter vendors you're going to find anywhere. The largest supply of retail credit, fleet credit, cash credit. Okay, we have auto finance you can get without a personal guarantee and credit check. Remember, Christine got 185000 at Ford using our system without a personal guarantee or credit check. We offer all kinds of financing, which I didn't even talk about today. Financing based on cash flow, the 0% credit line hybrid we talked about. Less than 2% interest rates on asset-based lending. It's not even based on credit quality. SBA loans, okay, term loans, lines of credit. All of that is what you're getting when you're actually working with us. And if you are enrolling through Friday, we find the people that get the best results take action quicker. I'm throwing in six bonuses as well. I'm going to give you 30 days or 30 minute coaching call with a business advisor to tell them about your business. Anything you want to address to help you get capital, you've got that. And regular advising calls as well. 90 days of business credit monitoring. It's almost 750 bucks from the bureaus. You're getting with DB Equifax and Experian at no cost as part of this as well. If you're getting started by Friday, okay, you're getting credit monitoring for only $24 a month after that for all three. We're getting a really cool widget on your website that shows you multiple review sites because we need to manage reviews everywhere nowadays. A 28-page business evaluation report and a complete branding course. One of my my buddies, Mark Instant, sells for two grand. Okay, we're giving you that as well. So it's about seven grand worth of bonuses. Uh, and ultimately, our value of what we've got is well over 12 grand, seven grand worth of bonuses. But if you're getting started with us by Friday, it's $29.97. Okay, that's actually what we're going to get you in on, on top of the bonuses, of course, or you can break it down to seven payments of $597. We make sure your payments are affordable. If you can't afford $597, that's okay. All you have to do is give us a call. Our number's right here on the bottom. And if you give us a call, we will work with you on payments that will be affordable for you. We'll customize a payment plan for you. We work with all kinds of sources that will finance your enrollment too to make it easy to enroll. And of course, we can help you get loans and credit lines to help you get the money to enroll as well. So if you aren't able to afford the two ninety seven or twenty nine ninety seven, the five ninety seven payments, we will work with you to make sure it works. If you like what we have, we've even got a lot of pricing options which aren't on our website that we'll talk to you about as well. And um, if you don't feel that what we have is worth every penny that that uh, that you get or that you pay, then we'll, you can cancel any time within 30 days and get your money back. It shifts all the risk to us. Even if you make the first payment, uh, we still get you access to everything. This is one of my good buddies, Sam, and I'll tell you his real story here after I read this because this helped him get through COVID. My business is Dragon Gym, a martial arts studio that was founded in 1973 by my instructor, Diego, and took over by my partner and I 10 years ago. About a year and a half ago, my business partner and I decided within 18 months, we were going to open our second location. We got connected with Credit Suite and we were able to accelerate our timeline and open this location only six months instead of 18. Getting the financing meant that we could start fulfilling our dream of having 10 or more locations. They used business credit and the business credit accounts like Credit Line Hybrid and Commercial Credit to be able to open three locations in 18 months. They were going to open two. They opened three in that time frame. Then uh, guess what happened? COVID hit. Martial arts, needless to say, uh, contact sport, they really got hit hard. And they used business credit and those revolving credit lines to pull them through. They opened an online course and now they're crushing it. They're back to where they were and they have all this online course revenue that they brought in. Plus they opened up the t-shirts and all of their uh, their gear. They opened up an, an area selling all of that and have absolutely crushed it. And they not only mitigated what could have been catastrophic through COVID, uh, but they were able to do that and grow their business by two new verticals, by gear, shirts, et cetera, and by an online, all because they use business credit. So again, here's everything that you're getting when you enroll, everything you need to set up your business the right way, build your business credit, access financing all in one place. You're getting some really cool bonuses worth about seven grand as well, including 750 bucks worth of credit monitoring, an awesome $2,000 branding course. I send this to all of my friends so they can actually go through and build their personal brands as well. And you should be in 2021. And of course you get that guarantee with us as well and get everything with your first payment. So uh, I promise you, if you stay to the end, I teach you how to get every, the playback of this webinar, credit monitoring for free, no cost consultation. It all happens by giving us a call at 877-600-2487, or you can go to creditsuite.com forward slash consult. If you want to actually get started with our special that goes through Friday, you can go to creditsuite.com forward slash webinar or give us a call. Send us an email. Look, we have thousands of people that are going to see this, right? So a lot of people will call our phone lines all at once. Just leave a voicemail. They'll call you right back. Okay. Or send an email at info at creditsuite.com or go to consult or creditsuite.com forward slash consult. You can get those bonuses and get your free consultation. And again, 
If you got value, hit the like button, hit the love button, hit the share button. That means a lot to me. And it's the only thing I've even asked you to do. So now you have two paths. You've learned a lot here today that will get you on track in 2021 of building your business credit. And we have a lot of free information on our social channels. You can access them all at our top of our website, creditsuite.com. And if you want the faster path, you're working with a company that's the top in the space. It's helped 42,000 through thousand people through this. That takes years of this process, condense it to only months. And you have to ask yourself, if you get that money in six months versus 24 months, how much of a difference does that make to your 2021? Well, that's what happens when you're working with us. So uh, I am going to plug us a little bit because we can help you get there way faster. And if money is an issue, we have affordable payments. We have pricing plans and options that aren't even on our website. You're never going to know how affordable this really could be for you until you give us a call, send us an email or schedule at creditsuite.com forward slash console. I promised you I would hang around for webinars and that's exactly for questions. And that's exactly what I'm do. So let me jump in and answer all of your questions. We have a DB profile. Banks keep telling us no uh, need 500 K to take out other security companies like ours. Keep in mind, it's not a DB credit profile that matters. Okay. What matters is that you have an established credit profile and score with DMB Equifax Experian. The more accounts you have reporting, the better it's going to be. You also need to know that if you're trying to get a loan for $500,000, which that's not what you're saying here, but if you are, business credit alone isn't going to be the only thing they're going to look at. They're going to look at other things like tax returns, et cetera, but business credit's a big driving factor. So having a DMB credit profile doesn't matter. Having a deep DMB Experian and Equifax credit profile does matter, Rob. Hopefully that helps you. Ike says, does your business bank account also need to reflect the virtual business address? Your, <clears throat> your ba business bank account needs to reflect the same address as everything else. Everything should have the same address and you should stay on the, <clears throat> excuse me, virtual address side versus the home address side. So yes, that does need to be congruent. Mm. Can I get access to LexisNexis? You can look online. LexisNexis now has an online form. You can fill out to get your copy of your LexisNexis credit report. It is free. Uh, and again, if you're working with us as a client, we help you get LexisNexis and check systems and fix that as well. Uh, will this be emailed? If you stayed to the end of this, we will email you back the playback of this. Yes. If you didn't stay to the end, uh, then which you wouldn't be here. But if that was the case, then you'd have to email us or give us a call. We could talk to you. But if you stay to the end, it's always the reward of staying to the end as you get that playback. Uh, hey, Ty, I'm interested uh, the issue I'm running into is, fun, uh, is uh, funding. I filled my business secretary state. Have my duns. I still need a business phone number address. Um, okay, sure. All you have to do is give us a call or send us an email. And then what we can actually do is we will talk to you a little bit more. I will take a picture and send this to our team. But give us a call, send us an email, and we will talk to you a little bit more about making it affordable for you to enroll. Uh, Angela says, when I set up my net 30 accounts with Quill, Uline, does the purchase have to be over a certain amount? Everyone is a little bit different. And again, if you're working with us, that's what's nice because right here in each one of our accounts, we actually list that. We tell you the exact requirements to get approved. So you know that, but the short answer is some vendors have a minimum purchase. Some don't. Um, some of them it's 50 bucks. Some of them it's a hundred bucks. So if you don't have access to our system, if you're not a client, then what you really should consider doing is call the source before you apply, especially Quill and Uline. They definitely have minimum requirements, so you've got to check with them directly. Um, Angel again says, a guy from Dunn's called me and told me that my net 30 accounts will not be reported if I don't have more than three, that it's correct. We talked about that today during the training. In order to have a credit profile set up with Dunn and Bradstreet, you need three accounts reporting to Dunn and Bradstreet and your Dunn's number. If anybody calls you from Dunn and Bradstreet, I promise you they're trying to sell you the credit builder. You do not need to buy their credit builder. You do not need to buy from us to build business credit. If you go to our YouTube, you'll find a lot of training where you can self-learn and do this. So never feel you need to buy what they're selling you. Okay, do you guys have a payment plan to sign up with your program? We do. And also remember, we have a partner program where you can offer business credit financing as a product or as a service. It's $5.97 on our website a month to enroll. If that's not affordable, give us a call. We will construct a payment plan that works specifically just for you. Uh, tie them on a different situation. I have the business already, have EIN, have a bank. However, my phone, business address is a house. In short, it's been idle for about a year. Uh, I need help to revise this. Someone was doing that for me. We could do that for you. If you give us a call, we can go from helping you set up the initial business and all steps involved. We can also help uh, you through that process of actually getting that stuff on track. Uh, if you don't want to work with us, at least give us a call. We'll do a consultation to talk to you more about what you need to do to get on the right track. Uh, Latanya says, how do I add my daughter to my LLC and change business address, phone number, professional email? Uh, the, the daughter to LLC, you should be able to do with secretary of state. You can file an updated amendment 
to your corporation or to your entity with your secretary of state? Uh, and how do you change your business address, phone number, email? You've got to go get all those things, the, the professional, the business address, email, phone number, and then you need to update your records everywhere. If you want to update all your yellow page records and everywhere online through one source, you can use a company like Yext, Y-E-X-T. Yext is very powerful. That could help you do a lot of that in one place. Uh, and Latanya says, I don't want my home address. Yep, we just talked about that. Tamika says, how do you build credit with just an EIN number? We talked about that. That steps I told you today are how you build business credit for the EIN that's not linked to your social. Uh, and I just seen your prices. So have I done most of this will be uh, cheaper for me? Uh, if you've done most of it, sure, give us a call. Um, we'll give you a discount if you've done a lot of it. But I'll be honest with you. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull a fundability report and we're going to look and see if it's done or not. Meaning we pull a fundability report to see what lenders and credit issuers see. And if you're saying I did a lot of this, that means that everything should check out in that fundability report. If the fundability report shows there's still a lot of issues, then you really haven't done as, lot of, as much as you think you might have done. A lot of people are in that boat, but we'll definitely talk to you about that. Let me know. Um, can I start this over? If you're on the webinar and you stayed to the end, we will send you a playback. What percentage of DTI and credit lines must a business maintain as it advantages and tiers of credit building? They don't look at DTI. Uh, they don't look at, at DTI to determine that. Ultimately, they're looking in lending and business side of your ability to repay those debts. So it's not a particular DTI. Curtis says, how do you get revolving uh, credit on a business credit account? We just talked about that today as well. That was probably, that was, looks like that was in the beginning of the, uh, no, it wasn't. Uh, Curtis, ask that question again, because that doesn't make any sense. How do you get revolving credit on business credit account? I walk you through the steps. That's what we just walked through was getting vendor account, then getting revolving retail credit account, getting fleet credit, getting cash credit. So we did walk through that process. If there's something not clear, let me know. How much is recommended to open a business bank account? A lot of them will want $50 deposit, but every bank's different. Uh, Michelle says, we're building several businesses. One of them is going to be a real estate holding company. They will eventually be held in Nest Corp. Should we build credit in the real estate LLC or the S Corp that will eventually own it? Uh, you could do it either way. You could do it in the LLC or the S Corp or both. It Really, there's no right or wrong. We see people do it each different way. You have a holding company. A lot of people build business credit for the holding company. A lot of people build business credit for the holding company and the companies that are under that holding company. There's no right or wrong way. It depends on how you're going to use the credit. Uh, how would you get a, a source as a private business? Uh, I'm not sure you're going to have to ask that question again. That doesn't make sense to me. Want to start up my business, don't know where to start. Is this for me? We walk you through every aspect of setting up the business structure the right way. But if you're asking about, you know, selling products, what to sell, all those kind of things, that's something you really need to know first. But if you're ready to get your business off the ground, you know what your business is going to be, et cetera, then our system is perfect for startups because we help you structure your system all the way through. Uh, the right way. And it's perfect for established businesses because we help you go back and fix the thing that's done incorrectly. How about corporate seal and stock kit? Do you help with that? You don't need that. It, it's, it's something that I've never used. I've never used the stock seal and that kit. And I bought several of them. I tell everybody not to buy it. It's an upsell. You don't need, it's not something you're ever going to need in your business. Um, maybe you will, maybe somebody will correct me, but it's nothing I've ever needed before. And we talked about uh, investment. It's five ninety seven a month to work with us, or two two thousand nine hundred ninety seven dollar one time payment. Um, or we can work out specialized payments. We've got stuff that's off uh, our website as well. Just give us a call or send us an email. And uh, Michelle says regarding multiple businesses, how does this work? You follow the steps in our system and do the same thing for every business. Is how you do it, and you can do multiple businesses. You don't need to buy our system multiple times. And June says, are these advisors based in the U.S. and not the Philippines? I'd like to know where is the U.S. call center based? We are 100% virtual. Credit Suite had two offices, one in Tampa, one in Washington State. And through COVID, we're like, nah, we're not doing it. So we shut down both offices. 70% of our team has always been virtual. And to answer your questions, our advisors are both. We have, uh, we have people in the Philippines that have worked for Credit Suite for um, 10 years. Sarah has uh, been with me now for 10 years and uh, probably knows more about business credit building than all everybody on here combined. Uh, not as much as me, but she's getting there. And then we've also got advisors. A lot of them are US based. So uh, our head business advisors, Jan, who runs our advisor team, she's actually out of Wisconsin. So our whole team is virtual. We are 100% virtual based company. We shut down both offices in COVID. We, it was too much liability and risk for us as I think a lot of people will actually do. Okay, um, that being said, uh, I saw, oh gosh, I got a bunch of other things, questions and comments here. We could be here for a while, which I, I told you I would answer. So I will make sure that these are answered. 
I think maybe I did. Let me make sure that these are the same ones, but I'm going to sit here and make sure everybody's questions can be answered. Okay. So da, 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 I'm just going through real quick. I had a bunch of, uh, a bunch of uh, things regarding auto. Okay. I'm a sole prop and was able to get approved for EIDL. I've heard somewhere that once you are within SBA's database, SBA lenders will be able uh, to your SBA loan history. Is that true? Uh, look, th this is part of uh, uh, this. This is part of, as we talked about SBFE, when you're in the system and a bank gives you a loan, or even if you got an EIDL, all of that loan, that information is trackable from SBFE. So yeah, we did talk about that today. Um, and so that is the case. They can see that. And I have that same question offered a lot, or a lot of people are offering. Okay, are we able to receive a recording? We talked about that as well. Let's be recorded. How do you get the first card to start the good credit going to your business? Those are through those vendors. And we talked about that. I think you asked that question before. We talked about Crown Office Supplies. We talked about Uline, Quill, Granger, et cetera. Those are those vendors that we talked about. That's how you'll build the initial business credit. And um, my fee, DOC, I think you're talking about LOC and that's line of credit. Clarify to me if you're asking something else. No doc probably means no documentation. That's right. No doc means no documentation, like no bank statements and tax returns to qualify for that credit line hybrid. Okay, uh, Dan says, so if you don't have good credit or other docs showing good credit worthiness, then no doc means it's easier as you don't get required. Well, there's a couple things. No doc for the credit line hybrid, for example, and a lot and almost all business credit accounts are no doc too. First of all, you don't have to supply any documentation. It's just easier and faster to get approvals that way. Secondly, your bank statements, your tax returns aren't being scrutinized. Uh, there's a lot of things lenders look at, and I have separate training on this, on what they look for in your bank account. Well, every time you supply a bank statement, supply documentation, then it, you're going to get scrutinized. So when I talk about a credit line with no doc, well, they're not looking at bank statements. They're not looking at tax returns. So it's way easier to get approved. It's easier and faster to get approved because there's less things they're looking at, and there's less things that can stand in your way of the approval. After opening a trade account, how and when do they report? It depends. Um, most of them are 30 days. Some of them are quarterly. Uh, in our system, we say how often they report. If you're working with the credit issuers directly, not working with cre Credit Suite, then you just want to ask them. But a lot of them report monthly and some of the others report quarterly. Okay. Um, let me look and see. Learning a lot. Okay. Will the recording, we talked about that as well. Yeah, the recording will be emailed to you if you attended to the webinar and stayed until the end. Uh, how do you keep them from checking your personal credit? Uh, most of the vendors won't ask you. The revolving sources, we talked about that. You need to clarify when you apply that you've put no personal guarantee authorization, no credit check authorization. Let them know that you're not authorizing it. You can even put, so, so SSN is only being supplied for identity, identity verification. Sometimes you can even call in and tell them that as well, just so you know. And Deborah says, how can I watch this from the beginning? We talked about that. How do you build credit with just an IEM? We talked about that process of getting started with credit suite creditsuite.com forward slash webinars the link to get in on this special also just give us a call our team can talk to you about getting started as well great stuff uh from a fellow dad uh that's awesome i appreciate that uh, and this is a great session is this we talked about the recording uh interest is yeah it can it absolutely can uh robin's made a good point he is wow paying a lot of interest if i pay monthly payments yes we heavily discount it if you are paying one pay, because we want you to make one payment, not over seven or eight or nine months. If you're paying it over seven or nine months, you're definitely going to pay money and interest. There's ways around that as well by doing one payment or by us helping you get other kind of financing as well. So absolutely, Rob, as you can see, we highly incentivize somebody for making one payment. Uh, and that's kind of the way that it is. We like that that we find that the business owners that come in and a lot of them that pay one payment kind of get started faster and also have better results and just more committed to the process, which is why we do that. Okay. And $29.97 is a one-time fee, or you can break it down into payments of $5.97. You can see that at creditsuite.com forward slash webinar. I'd like to know where, and we talked about that as well, had to work late. We talked about recording. Well, um, 50 percent of those items. Remember, somebody might say, and this is something uh, that you've said multiple times. I have 50 percent of those items complete. Remember, I showed you 10 or 15 of 125 fundability factors. So we just scratched the surface of all the fundability stuff. But again, as I talked about, give us a call. And we'll talk to you more about that as well. Uh, can I build business credit while living in Mexico? You can, as long as you have a U.S. based business. How often must I buy? It, they uh, every 12 months. It, the credit limit on your the your credit reports show the recent amount of credit you've used in the last 12 months. So as long as you're using an account once every 12 months, you're going to keep that on your credit report at whatever number that you actually recently put on your credit report. Okay, what percent of GTI? We talked about that as well. I'm applying EIM. Don't know if I need to select the S Corp or LLC. 
You could talk to our advising team about that if you're a client. If not, you want to talk to an accountant. You could even talk to an accountant about that, about the benefits between an S Corp and an LLC because there are very unique benefits between the two. Uh, and uh, I have at least six tier one accounts, Dunn's number of 80, Experience 91, Equifax shows zero. How long does it take for the accounts I should be reporting? Every month or every quarter, but Equifax is tough, man. Not a lot of people report to Equifax. So it's very common for Equifax to be the last bureau people build because so few report to them. But most of the time, you got to make sure you got credit with credit issuers, report to Equifax. And then of the ones that you know do, talk to them and ask them how long it takes them to report and they'll tell you individually. Can a person on a disability open a business secure card if they're established a business? You can, but secure cards in the business world aren't very popular. Wells Fargo used to have a good one. They don't anymore. I don't even know of any good secure credit cards. Most of them are net terms. You don't find a lot of that, but you absolutely can do it. I've heard somewhere that once you're within, okay, we talked about that as well. What are the repercussions of changing from a sole prop to an LLC? There are none. As long as you keep your same entity, or excuse me, as long as you just do an entity change, um, you're able to do that. Uh, Jim, would you start with an LLC in regarding to getting DB? There is no repercussions when it comes to a Dunn's number for that. Hey, Ty, I've tried to apply for credit based on just my AM, but most of them ask for a PG to process the application. How can I get around that? Um, I promise you that if that's what you're running into, you skip steps, which is what a lot of entrepreneurs do. Everybody wants to skip fundability. Everybody wants to skip vendors. Then they go to Amazon and revolving sources and they don't understand why they get approved. I showed you the answer in this training. I mapped it out step by step. The reason is, is that you're skipping steps and the skipping of steps is what's creating your problem. So you've got to remember, you've got to have at least five accounts before you even get to revolving credit. If you're not able to get approved for that revolving credit card without a PG, you don't have enough payment experiences. You have to start, continue to accumulate them until you can get approved. So for example, you know, Amazon might approve you with five accounts while Lowe's needs 10. So the short answer to your question is that you skipped steps. You didn't do fundability and you didn't do vendors. I bet if we pull your business credit report right now, we don't see DMB Equifax Experian commercial credit reports with three, four, five plus accounts on there. That's the problem. So the answer is, is you have to establish those payment experiences before you get to revolving credit. Uh, are these, uh, we talked about the advisors as well. Uh, how much does it cost? How much does it cost for the blueprint, but no assistance? Uh, we have a program for that as well. Give us a call and we'll talk to you about a, one, a, a unique payment plan that works for you. But we do actually have our finance suite with uh, with out the guidance without our coaches. That's more affordable. That might be a better solution for you. I'm a sole prop and was able. Okay, we talked about that as well. Um, I drive a truck and some of the vendors you mentioned is not in my field. Uh, look, well, there's a lot of, uh, well, that's okay because there's still stuff you're going to need. If you go get a Quill account to get office supplies, they sell over a million products. And there's all kinds of stuff when you're in your truck that you're going to need. So remember, those are some of the primary vendors that you have, but you got to find stuff that might not work for you. I'll give you an example. Granger sells outdoor supplies. I use Granger to buy first aid kits and batteries, something we all need as a first, especially truckers, first aid kit and batteries. So there's stuff at every vendor you can find that you need. Uh, remember, it's just the short-term sacrifice for kind of being able to come in uh, and being able to get those vendors report to the business credit reporting agencies as you're getting vendors to sometimes buy stuff you normally wouldn't wouldn't be able to buy. Uh, so somebody's asking about the pricing again. We did cover that. Just guys, just go to creditsuite.com forward slash webinar. It'll show it to you. It's 2,997 one-time payment or seven payments of 597. And we have customized payments, uh, payments that will work for you as well. Um, I'm not sure you covered, but I missed how much for a plan to build business credit. We just talked about that. Okay. I have my e e EIN and Duns. I also have a small business credit card, the capital one I forgot about and didn't pay. Uh, should I pay it off close and start over? I have a capital one spark card I don't use because they report to consumer and commercial credit. And I told them it's a crock of, I told them it's not good. They said, I caught myself there. And then, uh, and, and I told them I won't use it and I don't use it. We use it as an emergency backup card. We never use it. So I would get something other than Capital One Spark because they report to consumer and commercial credit cards. How do I become a partner to offer business credit financing and help people? Give us a call. We'll talk to you more about our partner program. Uh, with the purchase of the plan, how many times do we get to speak to consultants? As many times as you want. You can call us, email us, and chat online as many times. We typically call you five times the first five days and regularly after that until you don't need us anymore. So we'll call you and you call us, and we'll spend 30, 60 minutes on those phone calls with you. That's why people rave about our advisors is because we don't rush you off the phone. Okay, we'll spend 30 minutes. We'll spend 60 minutes if we need to to help you through that process. 
Um, and I appreciate that. This was not what I thought. Okay. Uh, Royal says it was not what I thought, not what I thought it would be. Well, hopefully it's better than what you thought it'd be. And you're not disappointed. Do you recommend to apply for secure gas cards like circle K and seven one? I don't fuel cards will require a $500 deposit and a personal guarantee until you have eight accounts on your business credit reports. Be patient, get your eight. Then you don't need the deposit. And you don't need the personal guarantee. That's my recommendation. You can provide the guarantee and the deposit and get them sooner. But my advice is build your eight, then get them without the PG and without the, without the down payment. Uh, okay. Does it matter how we pay for this? Nope. You can do uh, that's up to you. Uh, how are we addressing the business address Alliance? You don't want a P.O. box. You don't want a UPS address. Alliance is the best virtual address source. Da Vinci and Regis are ones that can work as well. At what point can you go out there and purchase a vehicle with just your business credit? 14 accounts reporting on your business credit reports. GM, Mercedes. I just had somebody in my webinar last week that bought a brand new Mercedes with no personal guarantee or credit check. Ford, GM, Ally, uh, Toyota, they all offer it. It's about 14 accounts that you need on there and a $10,000 high limit to get, to get them without a personal guarantee or credit check. Does using a DBA work for attaching an LLC? You, yeah, you know, you, you, if you're a sole prop, you want to get away from sole prop. DBA helps you, but it's not going to be help enough. You need to get away from the DBA. Is changing from sole prop to LLC uh, any potential issues with e SBA, EIDL, or PPP? It's not. I've been approved for a crown office supplies and got approved. I even made a purchase, still don't have a score. What should I do? It's probably because you didn't give them enough time to report. As, as I've said multiple times here, if you don't have three accounts reporting to DMB, that could account for your problem as well. Okay. Um, if I'm a client, can I apply for the hybrid credit line? You absolutely can. Give us a call. Anybody on our team can help you there. So it'll be five payments of the 597. It's seven payments of 597. You can get all that information at creditsuite.com forward slash webinar. You are amazing. I have watched this step by step. Uh, for, I appreciate that. And um, how does your previous personal foreclosure? It doesn't matter at all when it comes to business credit building, but you do want to have it addressed. It will come in, become an issue with loans for you down the year, or down the line. Uh, do I have, okay. We talked about that. Uh, Capital one spark type. Uh, if you use one of those companies for your address, where does your mail go to? If, if I have, a, we, I'll give you an example. Our main address is on Kennedy Boulevard in Tampa. And when we get mail there, they scan it to us and they email it to us. Then they mail it to us. So we get it right away because they scan it and mail it to us. And then, uh, and then they actually mail it to us as well. How to become a partner. We talked about that today. I am, uh, I'm loaned to expand my business. Can you help me with that? We do. We work with every legitimate kind of funding source. Now I'm on to answering Facebook, LinkedIn, Periscope, YouTube, all of your questions. Uh, I'm here to answer you. I got to meet with a client now. Will this be available? It will be. You're on YouTube, Augustus. So hopefully uh, you're able to access that again on YouTube. You will be able to. It's crazy that every time I need to research something, it was on a video the next day. Yeah, I am. Uh, Fletch, I'm in your head. I live in your head and I know what you need. And then I deliver content based on just that topic. It's hard because there's a lot of things happening, Fletch, in your head that I'm able to do that. Okay. Uh, SBFE, a lot of people are, are surprised by that. How long should I do vendor credit with a 700 credit score? Well, it depends on you. I would use credit line hybrid if I had a 700 score. That's what I would do. But if you don't want to use the personal guarantee and get the credit lines, et cetera, uh, then you, you don't need to use the vendors more than one, two, three purchases. I still use them. I use Quill over Staples because Quill helped me out to build business credit when Staples wouldn't. And I'm the most loyal dude in the world. Like I am loyalty is my number one life quality. I believe a lot in loyalty. So it, you, Quill helped me and I continue to buy stuff from Quill over Office Depot and Staples because they helped me when Office Depot and Staples didn't. But make two, three purchases and that's it. And Or again, just make you know, make one every year um, and you'll be fine. But if you want to keep those accounts active on your business credit reports, you need to be making at least one a year. That's a really good question. To do, what's your number? Okay. What should I apply for first? I'm trying to establish business credit. Now we talked about a lot of those sources after you asked that question, but you saw that crown office supplies, Granger, Quill. We talked about a lot of those as well. A great info. What kind of accounts do I apply for to start off? We talked about that crown office supplies, Granger. We talked about Lachlan and associates today. Uh, we talked about Uline. We talked about Quill amongst many others. Those are the ones that you want to start off with from per, per my advice in 2021. Short life, just waiting for my income tax return to open my business bank account. That's awesome. Remember, it doesn't take a lot of money, maybe 50 bucks and you're good. 
Uh, so you don't need to wait to do that. And also remember, the sooner you open your business bank account, the, the easier it is for you to get money in the future because a lot of things are based on that, including a bank rating credit score, which I don't have time to dive into now, but you could check our training online. We've got a lot about that. Uline reported to mine so fast. The trade line was there before I made my first purchase. That shouldn't happen. You, you, in order for an item to report, you need to actually have an account and make a purchase and pay it, or they wouldn't be able to have your payment history to report. But Uline is very fast. You're absolutely right about that with that as well. Um, okay, I think I just went back. Virtual webinar. Ah, I think I just lost my place. Got an email. Okay, so let me go back here for a second. Okay, love you. Uh, Crown Office Supplies reported to my DMB. Okay, there we go. Okay, uh, that I use Crown Office Supplies, Uline, Granger, Granger, and Quill. So somebody else is answering that question. I got approved for twenty three hundred for Crown Office Supplies. I love Crown Office Supplies, guys. They are fantastic. Uh, yep, thirty to ninety days is what Delo says, and that's exactly correct on how long it takes accounts to report to the business credit reporting agencies. Okay, uh, I'm in heaven right now, just waiting for the price at the end. Okay, and we went through that as well. That was at two o'clock. So I just to show you where I am in your con. I'm, I'm all about considering time is money. You know that it uh, uh, that uh, that's exactly how you have to look at it. In running a business, eventually you get to a point where your your time is worth more than the money. And I was, <laughs> I had that happen the other day. I was at, I was at Target, and I needed a universal charging cord for my son's laptop, and they charged me fifty dollars for a universal charging cord. I was so mad. But as I was checking out with the friend I was with, I said, you know what's frustrating is I said I'm going to pay the fifty. Because I know that if I go anywhere else to price shop, it's not worth the time. My time is worth so much more than the money that I will save. So, you know, as business owners, when you start to really get into seven, eight figure businesses, you just get that your time is money. And remember with us, we're cutting years off that business credit building process. And it's cheaper to build business credit with us and do it on your own. Because, you know, you don't pay for a DUNS number. We get you credit monitoring a discount. We get your 411 listing at no cost. You get evaluations for um, for your business at, at no cost. There's so much stuff we discount or give you for free that if you really look at the math, it's actually cheaper to work with us. Anybody else? Oh, subscribe, Delo. It took me all this to get you to subscribe. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Everybody else, if you got value here, please subscribe. Tower says, I got an email from Credit Suite regarding PPP round two. Can I qualify even though I, I'm a new business? Uh, PPP round two compares 2019 quarter to 2020 quarter. You had to have had a business open in, in a quarter in 2019 and have a decrease in sales by 25%. That's PPP's requirement here for second round of PPP. Uh, you've been a blessing to our company. Thank you. Because that's exactly why I'm here. Because I got frustrated because all the stuff I teach you wasn't out in the space. So we built the company around going to get that information and making it available and giving it out for free, even though everybody thinks we're crazy. Okay. We give it out so much content for free because we want everybody to be able to benefit. And we know that some of you want the faster path and, and enroll with us to get that faster path. Um, I'd like an email, the webinar, email us or call us and our team will send you that. Um, I share as well. Love you. And thank you very much. Chance. I appreciate you sharing and we'll sign up to work with you guys. I appreciate that. The share means a lot. Everybody that shares, it really means a lot. And I see that we keep a log of everybody that shares too. So I appreciate it. Um, the, the 99 membership with crown report, uh, they do report that to the business credit reporting agencies. Yes. Uh, how do we get on the actual webinar next time? Uh, you have to get on our email list. So there's, I, I, I do live streams three times a week. Once a month, I do a webinar like this. And to get on the webinar, you have to, well, I'll, I'll give you a shortcut. Go to creditsuite.com forward slash live. If you go to creditsuite.com forward slash live, type in your first name, email, phone number to get our, our guide on building business credit. That will put you on our email list. We will send you several notifications every month about our email list. Let me give you, I'm going to give you, uh, first time I've mentioned it, I'm going to give you guys a hint. Next week or next month, I have a three hour webinar. I know everybody's excited. I don't even know how I'm going to pee in between. I haven't figured that out yet, but it's a three hour webinar on 50 different ways to get money for your business in 2021. So I went through and found every viable way to get money for your business. We put it all in one massive presentation and next month that will be it. It will be 50 different ways. We will go about three hours. Don't worry, you'll get the playback. Uh, so if you want to get notified when we do stuff like that, you have to get on our email list. You can get on our email list at creditsuite.com forward slash live. I'll give you one more hint. Um, we are also doing a mini course. We're going to start mini courses, which are 10 to 15 minute, three or four video courses. And we will be releasing our first one next month. I'm so excited. I have a whole new studio getting set up here for these. And that, again, you won't be able to get notified unless you're on our email list. And we have some other really cool stuff too. So if you want to get on the email list, you go to creditsuite.com forward slash live. Uh, Valerie says, as you move up in credit tiers, do you still have to keep ordering? You don't. 
order once a year or that recent amount of credit used won't be anything. So just order stuff once a year if you want to keep those showing as active on your business credit report, the accounts that you're using. Okay. And will there be a replay after the live? There won't be, but at Lan, Lan, Lana, Lana, I hope I said that right. Lana, the recording will be on Facebook where you're watching it. It'll also live permanently on our YouTube. So if you go to Credit Suite's Facebook page, you will be able to access the playback. If you want a playback, you can email us and we'll send you an email playback as well. Well, virtual address companies, do you recommend? I recommend Alliance. They are the best in my opinion. Uh, for the hybrid credit line, if you use a partner, what credit score is needed? About a 680 FICO score to get approved. John says, is now the best time to start a new LLC real estate looking uh, look up, looking for credit? More businesses are started in recessions and downturns in the economy than any other time. So yeah, I definitely think it's a good one. And right now, real estate on the commercial and residential side, I don't know about where you guys live. It's exploding down here in Florida, South Carolina, North Carolina. People are bailing from a lot of states that are permanently shut down. So it's a great opportunity. Aaron from YouTube says, Hey, Ty Hope as well. If I have over 700 personal credit score, is there an easy no doc loans? Yeah. We talked about that credit line hybrid. You can get up to $150,000 in no doc credit lines. Just give us a call. We'll talk to you more about that. No, don't do sole proprietor, Victoria. Thank you. Took the words right out of my mouth. Uh, like secure gas card. I have one R code $200 deposit 600. Yeah. You're getting those deposits Lewis from Facebook, uh, or Luis, if I either win. Um, because you don't have enough business credit established. If you do establish business credit, you could get around that and not need to actually have uh, those guarantees, just so you know that. Okay. And then, um, duh, 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 so late. How do I talk? How do I talk to purchase a vehicle? What department? Uh, when you go to buy a car, you just want to tell them you want to buy it in your business name. Tell them you have enough established business credit and the finance department at that dealership will help you. My husband watches you too. And he sent this to me, Ashanta, tell him I said hello and tell me his name too. And I'll give him a shout out right now. Uh, C Corporation, totally separate LLC. Okay, perfect. So thanks. All right. So now I'm going back because now uh, I've got those questions. I still have some other ones that came in. So I want to make sure that those are addressed. Is the fee a one time? Yep. The $2,997 fee is a fee one time with us. And then you can also pay monthly by $597. How would you serve credit as a business trust, not register with the secretary of state? You wouldn't in order to build business credit. You need to have a business uh, established that's linked to your EIN. That's not linked to your actual social with the purchase of this plan. How many times do we get to speak to consultants? We talked about that as well. There is no limit for multiple businesses. Do you need to build the credit per business company uh, for multiple businesses? Yeah. You're going to build credit per EIN that you have, but you can follow the steps to do it multiple times is changing from sole proprietor or to LLC or corporation create potential issue with the existing. We talked about that as well. And you're doing replay. I can't, I, I cannot, I'm not in a position where I can send you that replay, but if you you're on the webinar, you will get a replay of this because you stayed to the end. I've been approved for crown office supplies, got approved, even made a purchase. Uh, we had talked about that as well. So some of these report, I add my LLC. Okay. I think I answered all these questions. Yep. I, I, I answered. Them. Okay. So I'm going to wrap this up guys. Um, it, it, wait, it, it, D Lowe's in from Missouri. I appreciate that. It does Credit Suite have a promo code for Alliance for discounts? You can go to creditsuite.com forward slash virtual. I, I, I do not focus on our money as much as I probably should, right? Because we have a, a, an affiliate relationship with Alliance. I appreciate you asking. It helps us if you use that affiliate relationship. It's creditsuite.com forward slash virtual. If you go to creditsuite.com forward slash virtual, uh, that will give you what you need to be able to get that affiliate code. Aaron says, can I still get personal funding with a 700 credit score with only six to eight month history bill? Not typically. You're not going to get credit line hybrid with that. Some other funding may be available, but not credit line hybrid. Give us a call. You need to have about two years history with revolving credit cards in order to get that. What about parent companies and subs? Uh, how would you handle those? It's it's up to you. You could build business credit for the parent company, the umbrella company, or the companies under it. That really is up to you. And other than vendors, what are other trade lines to get the eight trade lines before applying to, for fuel cards? Credit line hybrid vendors. The only other option is you could use Dun & Bradstreet's credit builder program to add some accounts you already have, like software purchases, and stuff like that. I don't usually recommend it because it's 150 bucks a month, but it is an alternative. If the other vendors and stuff, Ashton, I, I showed you aren't enough to get you where you need. Okay, and do lines of credit look at business banking accounts when determining lines of credit? It depends on what ones you get. Our credit line hybrid doesn't. If you go to a big bank, they typically will. Um, and for big businesses, we talked about, is it beneficial to freeze your personal credit while building business credit? No, do not do that. It's a nightmare to freeze your credit. I would not do that uh, unless somebody's legitimately actually really stealing it. And I am going to, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to wrap this up. If you have any other questions, I'm going to answer five more maybe 
and then give us a call, send us an email. I have another three o'clock webinar I've got to run to, which is why, and that webinar is only for our partners. So if you enroll to offer business credit financing, I have all kinds of training on selling, how to sell, how to set up goals, how to, you know, all kinds of stuff on how we built credit suite to eight figures. I teach all of that stuff in our partner webinars and I've got that coming up at three. So I'm going to jump up here. Uh, so I'm not going to answer any more questions besides maybe what's already out here. If you have a DBA and your website, social agency is all out of the DBA, do you use your DBA name and everything? The official answer is you, you use the, the real name and the DBA. It needs to be both is the official answer of what credit issuers and lenders want to actually see. Can you have multiple LLCs and get the benefit of multiple businesses? You can, as long as you have multiple EINs. And how do I become a partner? Give us a call, creditsuite.com. Creditsuite.com, if you go to like pricing, that it gives you an option of building your business credit or becoming a partner. You can access our partner programs there. I'll get you the same discount we're giving you on Cord. This is going to throw my, my team into a frenzy because I didn't tell them that. that uh, for this webinar, I'll offer you the same discount as well on our partner program. You just have to give us a call and talk to us about it. You can also go to creditsuite.com forward slash partner. And Shanta says, I sure he will. His name is Derek uh, Burgess. Burgess. Derek Burgess, what's up, man? Thanks for tuning in. And thanks for having your wife tune in today as well. I really appreciate that. Okay, I'm going to wrap this up, everybody. I can see her answer. I answered every question that's come in and a lot more will continue to come in, but I got to get to this three o'clock webinar. So now you know the steps to build business credit and get financing. If you want the shortcut, you want to work with us, you want to get 7K worth of bonus. It's not like made up 7K, like legitimately what you'd pay to buy every one of those things on your own. Then give us a ring, 877-600-2487, info at creditsuite.com. Remember, you're entitled to a free consultation. We get you your DMB Equifax Experian credit reports for free on the consultation. We tell you all the funding you can qualify for. We do a funding, a fundability assessment. It all happens on a free consultation. If you call and hit our voicemail, I told you there are thousands of people that are going to watch. So what happens is they're going to be buried. That's okay. Leave a voicemail. Send an email, schedule your consult at creditsuite.com forward slash consult. As long as you get in this week, you're able to get the bonuses and everything that we talked about uh, during today's training, If as long as you enroll by Friday. So send us an email, give us a call, or schedule at creditsuite.com forward slash consult. Do you have information in Spanish? Domingo, we do. Our finance suite can be done in English and or Spanish, and all of our marketing materials as a partner are done in English and or Spanish as well. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Thanks everybody very much for tuning in. I hope you got a lot of value out of this today. Uh, if you want the replay, if you attended the webinar and stayed to the end, we will email it to you. If you watched on whatever social channel, LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, all of it will be there. When it's done, it will permanently sit on my LinkedIn. It will sit on my Facebook. It will sit on my YouTube as well for credit suites, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, and again, if you want to replay and you're like, I don't know where to go get the replay, then just email us info at creditsuite.com or give us a call and we will get that. Uh, Domingo says, muchas gracias. Uh, no problemo. Okay. I'm learning Spanish. Uh, uh, un poquito. So, espanol. So, thanks everybody very much for tuning in. And I look forward to seeing you in our next training where we talk about more cool ways to get money for your business. Thanks everybody again for tuning in. Have a 